Hello everybody, welcome back to Phasmophobia. We have recently been doing a whole lot, and I don't mean a whole lot, of live streams of Phasmophobia. So if you guys are interested, join us then. We do those on Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But right now, what I'm going to bring to you is a whole bunch of tips from one amateur to another. You will constantly hear me telling everybody during the stream that I'm going to have to grind for money whenever I get off of stream. By that, I mean... There are certain techniques that you can use when you're playing by yourself in single player that you really can't use when you're playing multiplayer and there's a way of doing it so that you can actually earn more money early game which is very very important as you can see I've got $592 and I'm level 207 to say the least I have died so many times in multiplayer it's very very easy to do. Uh, so what we do is after we play and we lose a whole bunch of money we go into single player and we try to earn some of that money back. But how are we earning that money back is what I'm about to bring to you. That way, if you are starting out level 1, level 10, or whatever, you can also use some of these same techniques to earn some money to get you started on your Phasmophobia career. And here's what we're going to do. First off, we are going to select a job. Right now, in the newest version that we have, the newest update we have, all of these are open. It used to be where you could only pick one or two places. Now you can actually choose one place that you can always go to earn money. Which one of these wonderful locations is the easiest one for you to earn money at? Well, Tanglewood is like the base minimum easiest POI to work with. But if you're wanting to earn money, one of the... Is it Grafton or Bleasdale? The farmhouses, because you can get a whole bunch of pictures... In the farmhouses, you usually find one of the voodoo dolls and sometimes also one of the uh, Ouija boards, all of which you could take pictures of to earn a little bit of extra money. So those two are actually the ones that I would say go to to try and learn. But I'm going to take you to Tanglewood just to show you the technique that I use to earn the money. Understand that each technique is going to change according to which house you go to and which one you decide to learn. First off, let's go to Tanglewood. We're going to hit amateur. Why? So we can get the most money back in case we die. Because you can still die and you can still lose money. So we're going to select that one. Now what am I going to take with me? Nothing. I'm taking only the base game items. Why? Because then I'm not sacrificing any of the items that I currently have. I'm only going to earn maybe tops, like 60 bucks from this. So as my first run and a couple of runs to start with, I'll do this. I'll just take these items and I will do those particular things. And that's all I'll take. No chance of losing anything. A chance for me to actually get to know these particular houses. If you've never played this game, learn the location. Learn the hiding spots. Learn the feel of the place for when the lights start blinking. Don't try to go in and immediately take all of the stuff that you have, all of your friends' stuff, and lose everything. Remember to check the whiteboard for help. New intel. Reports of light switching. Oh no, guys. Be careful out there. We have light switching. Uh, don't take what he says seriously at all. Um, Alright, these objectives, they're going to give you extra money. So if you can do one of these, that's great. But whenever you're first starting out, you may not have money for all of the smudge sticks, all of the candles, and for extra cameras, and that's fine. The goal here is to earn a couple of hundred dollars to start buying some of those things and help you get the levels so that you can actually open those things. So let's not even worry about that. What do we need to know? Her name's Margaret Anderson. Forget it. Don't say her name because it's going to piss her off. When you piss her off, she hunts. You don't want her to hunt because you take a chance on losing your stuff and things. Always pick up the key because, you know, nine times out of ten, you're going to forget to pick up the key. What are we taking? Camera because we find anything. Ouija board, bone, whatever, or if the ghost itself appears as soon as we walk in the door, the camera is going to get us the extra money. We need something to help isolate where it's at, and we've got our cheesy flashlight. Now, the ghosts will only hunt after they reach a certain sanity level. There are some exceptions. There are certain ghosts that can hunt you prior to your sanity sinking down, but they are few and far between, and trust me, when it happens, you will know because you will get wrecked. It happens to me every single time. So, how do we counteract that? First off, we turn off, turn on a lot of lights. Keeping the lights on inside this thing actually helps with your sanity. Whenever it gets dark, your sanity goes down. So as you learn a POI, okay, this is the main floor. Here's the basement right here. Creepy. Let's close that door. Okay, we're going to turn on all of the hallway lights and just leave them on for the entire time. Why? 
keep our sanity up because if our sanity stays up, the ghost doesn't hunt. What are we actually looking for? Two, maybe three pieces of evidence we can try to isolate which kind of ghost we're fighting. Why? Because we're going to guess. We're not actually here to capture the ghost. What are we here for? We're here for some form of evidence and we're here for pictures. So let's start looking for pictures. What do we got? Let's turn on some lights. Always turn on a light whenever we go inside a POI. This is a place where the Ouija board could be hiding. It's not there right now. I don't see anything out of place, and this is another reason why I say make sure you have a chance to learn the POIs because ghosts will mess with things in their environment. They'll move items, and you kind of need to know where the items are usually located. As an amateur, as a brand new, fresh-faced ghost hunter, you're not going to know where things normally are inside these particular things. Here's a hiding spot right here. These closets in amateur are good hiding places. Okay, I'm not seeing anything here. Let's check in here. Nothing in here. We are gonna... Oh my gosh, you scared the hell out of me, bear. Don't even worry about it. Okay, check in here. Nothing hiding in there. What? I thought I saw something. I thought I saw the bone. Okay, we're gonna... Okay. Now, just so you know, you can get ghost activity and ghost hunts as early as when you walk in the door. It can happen. Very, very rare, but it can. Also, you might get signs. There's certain things that can tell you where the ghost is located. An EMF, which is what I'm holding right now, could go to one or two. That's a thing. You could hear, and a good pair of headphones is the best idea for this game because you can hear the ghost walking. You can hear doors open and close. You can hear things being dropped. So definitely get yourself a good pair of headphones and always wear them. Right there is another good place for the Ouija board, but it's not there this time. So definitely be wearing your headphones. EMF2. But where? Right here. All right, so because I've got some sort of indication that the ghost was here at some point doing something, not sure what, I'm just gonna drop my EMF right there and continue with what I was working on. Why? Because the ghost is gonna do ghost things. And what am I after? I am after the tiniest bits of evidence so I can get the hell out of here. I'm not trying to capture the ghost. Okay, everything here looks normal. Nothing is out of place. No pictures are knocked off the wall. Typically, if the ghost mess with it, messes with anything, it goes into the floor. So if you just check the floor, you should know whether or not it's messed with anything. Turn on the lights as we go. Right here is another place where the Ouija board could be hiding. All right, right here is actually our... Uh, oh, there's the bone, is our breaker box. So if the lights all go out, there's a chance that this could be off. Here is our awesome bone. That is $10 right there. And look, guys, it's the Ouija board right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on it, and we're going to take a picture, and we're going to turn it right back off. We're not playing with that. No, thank you. That right there is 10 whole dollars. We just got a picture of that. Cool. Okay, nothing else seems to be moved. So far, no other evidence of the ghost other than an EMF, too. Uh, let us do this. We're going to set up a spot for us to run back to. Should we get hunted early game? What I'm doing is, is expecting the ghost to come in through here. We're going to come over here, use this door to block it, this door to close right behind us, and hope that that will work. It doesn't always work. Some of the ghosts are faster than we are. And if you're really good and you can keep your sanity about you, you can try to loop the ghost around this car right here. Doesn't really work for me. Typically hiding works better because as the ghost can spy on you, or as the ghost sees you, the faster it gets. So just be very, very careful of that. Okay, basement time. We're gonna turn on this light. Take a peek. Anything here messed up, missing, thrown on the floor. I don't see anything, but I do hear that the door up there is creaking. And the EMF is going off. Okay, so we're right back up here. I keep forgetting, where is the light to this area? What on earth is going on with you? Okay, you have completely changed the light right there, huh? All right. There we go. Let's turn that back on. Thank you. That's a ghost event right there. 
Uh, you just turned off some of my lights again. And open some of my doors. Now what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna drop this thing right here. I'm gonna go back outside. Now what you could do to save yourself a little bit of time since you're bringing so few items, before you ever walk into the house, before you unlock the front door at all, take everything out of the truck and set it on the front porch. Because this timer right here, when we first pulled up, I don't know if you guys were looking at it or if I even looked at it, there were five minutes that we could sit here and do absolutely nothing inside the house and we won't get hunted. Right now that timer is all the way down, which means we're in prime hunting zone. And we're 83%. There is one that can actually hunt right now. All right. We're going to take all of these evidences inside. Let's drop them off on the front porch right here. A lot of the pros will sit there and drop their flashlight inside. I'm not about that pro life yet. So that, that didn't sound right. Um, I'm not about dropping my flashlight. I like my lights. So we're just going to drop all this stuff on the front porch. We're not going to go inside the house and risk our sanity. We're going to drop them all right here in case we need them, you know? There we go. And we're going to take this. Why? Because we're going to be looking for fingerprints. Now, the, the game has changed a little bit. Fingerprints do not last forever. They only last for 60 seconds, which means we can't get all of the evidences all of the time. This ghost has been touching things, you know? Touching stuff and things. So let's take a look at all of the stuff and things. They like this door over here this light. Chances are this one, have you messed with anything else back here? No. So you might be wondering, why oh why don't we just say okay, the ghost is in here? No, because the ghost is probably not in there. It opened all of these doors, so it's probably a hallway ghost. And we're going to set up over here. Just to be on the safe side, I want to know for certain whether or not we've got any fingerprints. We have looked for fingerprints. We are good. Let's leave this on and in the middle of the floor so we can find it easily. If we see any doors open, it gives us a chance to come back and get them. We're going to take this book. We're going to set it in the middle of the floor. And we're going to turn this on and we're just going to drop it right here. I'm not going to talk to this ghost. I don't want to know all of its secrets. Why do I not want to know all of its secrets? Because it can actually affect my sanity and I'm not all about that life either. We're just going to leave it right there and if it chooses to talk with me, it can talk with me. Okay, now we start a little bit of investigation. Like I said, we want to try and get at least a couple of evidences. At least a couple. Maybe something to help narrow it down. We may not even get it. But let's try. Can we find some orbs? Are both of these lights on? No, okay. It kind of looked like it was. Turn that light off. Now the only issue is we also don't have a thermometer at this point. You're affecting my lights, I see that. Alright, let's just... Oh, I have some orbs and they are in here. So... What we're going to do, I'm going to set this camera right there. So technically the ghost is out here in the hallway, but its ghost room is where the orbs are. Where the orbs are, where the temperature is dropped, that's where the ghost room is. We're going to bring everything in here. But the ghost can interact with things all over the house if it's one to. Let's just get everything over here. This is going to tell us the dots. Dots, 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 dots. Right there. I take this. And take this. Uh, what am I carrying? The camera. I'm going to set you right there. Okay. Do we have any interactions in here? Can you give me a sign? No sign as of yet. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to step outside because our sanity is being affected the whole time we're inside the house and we're in the dim light or whatever, our sanity is going to be affected. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, instead of standing inside the room to watch the dots, I'm going to come in here and watch the dots. 
we're also going to check out the journal while we're out here. So far, we have orbs. That takes about half the list away. What are we feeling? What are we feeling? You are playing around with our lights. Could be the new one, the Raiju, which is scary because it can definitely get up in those things. It can get up in stuff. Uh, let's see. Do you have... You have dots. It could take a, a couple of minutes for it to actually show up, but this should be the room we see it in. Now, after you outfit your entire truck full of stuff, you can actually set up a camera and dots and stuff in several different rooms. That way, in case the ghost is moved to another room, because this might be its ghost room, but it might be hanging out in the hallway. And it kind of is, because it's messing with all the doors, it's hanging out in the hallway. So until it goes back to its ghost room, the dots may not work, so it could take a second. Uh, capture a picture of the ghost. Get it. Now I can't wait until we can actually do a step up from this and start bringing in some gear because we're going to talk about what kind of gear to bring along with you to do these. But this is just like this is amateur. Let's. This is our first thing. Is you see the little dots all over the place? There we go. Okay, I'm going to go as far as saying there are no dots. Might be a bit early, but if I do that, if I mark it out, what does that leave? Okay. Uh, all right, we're going to step back in there. We're going to do a couple more observations, nothing huge. As long as we can stay out of the 50 range, we should be okay-ish. Just don't spend too long inside your vehicle because then the ghost gets very, very upset. All right, I have no breath, which means it's probably not freezing. I had to turn my lights off in here, didn't you? See, it's messing with things. Now, if it was like the normal times, we could have just used that to possibly get fingerprints, but fingerprints are going to be a whole lot harder now that they don't last. Speaking of which, what did you do with my There we go. There we go. Let's let's take that. Let's look around. You know, while it's kind of active. Now, just because the ghost has touched things does not necessarily mean it's going to leave the fingerprints. This door right here. Sure. Okay, so that was another ghost event. It didn't shut the front door, so that wasn't a hunt. It's just playing, which means we lost some sanity on that. Let's go check it out. After we hit 50, we're gone. I'm going to say probably not EMF5. Probably not. Uh, if I mark off EMF5, what do we got left? Mayor, Revenant, Hantu, and Or... Onreo? What is the Onreo? That's a new one. Okay, well, we can't check this one because we don't have fire with us. Uh, as far as the others... So far, no spirit box. And no fingerprints. Is there a chance that this one's a revenant? Maybe not. But, let's think about this. We are at 70%. Uh, 60% were in range for more than half of the ghosts. 50% were in range of all of the ghosts. So let's think about this. First off, we're not dead, which means, and we didn't bring anything along with us, so we're chill. Even if we went in there and stayed until we absolutely died, we're not going to lose any money. The most we could possibly do is gain money by trying to get a better understanding of the ghost. So what are we going to do? We're going to go back in here. I just want to see if maybe we can get the spirit box to do something, you know? Or maybe get some fingerprints. Give me a sign. Where are you? Is it written in the book yet? No. 
Where are you? How old are you? Okay. Not feeling it, huh? Okay, uh, all my lights are out. Which means sanity is going down, but you didn't like me coming in here. Why? Are you playing in here? Can you give me a sign? Are you hiding in here? Ghost picture. Okay. Hey. We stuck around long enough to get a ghost picture. That's ten more dollars. But you are hanging out in there, so... Uh, hang on. Uh, let's drop a couple of things. While this might be the ghost room, if the ghost is active in a different part of the house, they are more likely to interact with these types of things where they are actually active. So, turn that back on, because you keep playing my stuff. Can you give me a sign? Okay, that was a survival of a hunt. That's kind of difficult because nowadays the ghosts, whenever they do their ghost events, sometimes your lights can flicker too. What I was listening for was, uh, first off, the EMF was going off. Secondly, I was getting out of my hiding spot to turn on my flashlight to see if it would draw them back to it. And since my spot was obstructed, they couldn't actually see whenever they tried to walk back towards me whenever my light came off. So let's go see what our sanity is. That was a pretty decent length hunting session, you know? 51. So yeah, we were in the 50s. But we did get a ghost picture, so noise. So those are actually really good. Now if we activated the Ouija board and asked it a question, we could have also gotten another picture that would have been an interaction, but uh, you trade some sanity points with that. So I wanted as much time inside this area as possible. I think... Now the issue is, is I don't actually know if it was an EMF-5 or not. Uh, I have no idea if it was a Revenant. I really don't think it's a Revenant. It wasn't behaving like a Revenant, but we're going to go with Revenant and get out of here. Now, the whole point in this is not necessarily to be a pro and get all of the ghosts right. It's to get some evidence, get a little bit of money, and get some experience working the whole house. So, let's see how we did on the guests. Okay. 
Uh, the only evidence we actually got were orbs, and we found out that the ghosts like to hang out in a different room. It was an Unreo, which was one of ours until... See, we got $45, but we didn't risk any of our stuff. We didn't die. And that's, that's not great, but it's better than nothing. So just remember, whenever you're first starting out, go to a POI. Spend time learning. When I say POI, I mean a, a point of interest, meaning any of the houses, any of the buildings. Go there repeatedly. Learn where the hiding spots are, where you can run around, where you can loop the ghost. Learn where the... Uh, bone spawns in, learn where the Ouija board spawns in. If you go to the, any of the farmhouses or other locations where the little doll, it's a little bitty doll, I probably should show that, but I guess I'll show that in the next episode. Um, if you want to find like the little dolls, the Ouija board, the bone, all of those places where those things spawn in, learn where those are so you can find them fast, because the longer you're in there, the lower your sanity. Also, we can get into talking about a little bit more about slightly higher techniques, like how not to drain your sanity while you're inside there using candles. But this is just the first of hopefully many phasmophobia tips that I can give you. This is the amateur's guide for the amateur and how to get a little bit extra money to start out with. For anybody who starts at the new game, it's kind of hard to get the money to start playing. And that's how you can do it. Don't take anything extra. Get the evidence you can and try to leave even if that means leave even if it means not getting the ghost right one evidence isolate it and that's it anyway i hope this has helped you in your first starting out of being a ghost hunter you have a wonderful day one for that and you stay shiny bye